It happened that green and crazy summer when Frankie was 12 years old. This was the summer when for a long time she had not been a member. She belonged to no club and was a member of nothing in the world. Frankie had become an unjoined person and she was afraid. And then, on the last Friday of August, all this was changed. It was so sudden that Frankie puzzled the whole blank afternoon and still she did not understand. Are they cold enough? Just a minute. Yes, they're cold enough. And them other two drinks is lemonade for you and John Henry. Seems to me this old arbor has shrunk. I remember when I was a child... Look, you... mint juleps. Well. <laughs> Happiness to Janice and Jarvis. It was such a surprise when Jarvis wrote home you were going to be married. I hope it wasn't a bad surprise. Oh, heavens no. As a matter of fact, if only you knew how I feel. Frankie's been bending my ears, son, ever since your letter came, going on about weddings and brides. Papa. It's lovely we can be married at Jarvis' house. It's what Jarvis's mother would have wanted. Oh, it would be beautiful. Uh, pretty soon we should be pushing off a of Winter Hill. I have to be back in barracks tonight. Winter Hill is such a lovely, cold name. It reminds me of ice and snow. <laughs> ice and snow? It was 102 at the base yesterday. Oh, it feels so good. Sister-in-law, doesn't that sound wonderful? Yes, dear. Yeah. You notice if you fix your attention on the words, they begin to sound funny. Sister-in-law, sister-in-law. <laughs> Frankie's crazy. You should have seen the letter she wrote to me. I wrote you so many letters, Jarvis, and you never answered me. And I sent you so many boxes of homemade fudge, but you never, never answered me. Oh, Frankie, you know how it is. I never saw a human grow so fast as Frankie in all my life. Last time I saw her, she was only up to here on me. I think maybe we ought to tie a brick to her head. Jarvis, don't. Don't tease your little sister like that. Well, I don't think Frankie's too tall, and she probably won't grow much more. I had the biggest portion of my growth by the time I was 13. But I'm just 12. When I think of all the growing years ahead of me, I get scared. I wouldn't worry. You see, I never believed in love until now. Where does the music come from? It sounds so close. It is. It's just behind us. They have club meetings and parties with boys on Friday nights. Hey, there! I watch them here from the yard. It must be nice having your clubhouse so near. Well, I'm not a member now, but they're holding an election this afternoon. Frankie thinks she'll be elected. Well, I don't care one way or the other. <laughs> I'll see you Sunday. Drive carefully, son. Goodbye, Janice. Bye. Thanks, Mr. Adams. Bye, Janice. Bye, Jarvis. Bye, I better go back to the store now and get my nose down to the grindstone. Bernice, you send John Henry home for supper at six. Don't wait for me. Yes, sir, Mr. Adams. You hear that, Candy? Your mama wants you home some of the time. I hear. I just can't understand it. The way it all just suddenly happened. Happened? Happened? I've never been so puzzled. Puzzled by what? The whole thing. They are so beautiful. I believe the sun's done fried your brains. Me too. Look here at me. You jealous? Jealous? Jealous because your brother's going to be married? No. I just never saw any two people like them. When they walked in the house today, it was so queer. You are jealous. Go behold yourself in the mirror. I can tell from the color of your eyes.
were the two prettiest people I ever saw. I just can't understand how it happened. Whatever ails you acting so queer? I don't know. I bet they have a good time every minute of the day. You must have to have a good time. Us have a good time. Us. Yes, us. Come on, let us play a three-hand game of bridge. Janice and Jarvis. Winter Hill. The wedding. It's all so queer. Can't bid. Never have a hand these days. Spade. I don't want to bid spades. That's what I was going to bid. Oh, that's your tough luck. I'll bid them first. Oh, you fool, jackass. It's not fair. I'm squalling you two. Tell the truth, neither one of you got such a grand hand to fight over to bid about. But where is the cards? I ain't had no kind of hand all week. I don't give a darn about it. It is immaterial with me. My heart feels them going away. Going farther and farther away while I'm stuck here by myself. You ain't here by yourself. They were the two prettiest people I ever saw. Yet it was, it was like I couldn't see all of them I wanted to see. My brains couldn't gather together quick enough to take it all in. And then they were gone. Well, stop commenting about it. You don't have your mind on the game. Well, spades are trumping. You got a spade. I have some of my mind in the game. Go on, cheater. Make haste, Candy. I can't. It's a king. The only spade I got is a king. And I don't want to play my king on a Frankie's ace. And I'm not going to either. See, Bernie, she cheats. Play the king, John Henry. You know you got to follow the rules of the game. My king. It isn't fair. Even with this trick, I can't win. Well, just where is the card? Three days, I ain't had a decent hand. Getting to suspicion something, too. Come on, let's count these old cards. We've worn these old cards out. If you would eat these old cards, it would taste like a combination of all the dinners of the summer, together with a sweaty-handed, nasty taste. Why, well, the Jacks and the Queens are missing. John Henry, how come you do a thing like that? So that's why you asked for the scissors and stole off quiet behind the arbor. Why you take our playing cards and cut out all the pictures? Because I wanted them. They're cute. See, he's nothing but a child. He's hopeless. Hopeless! Just have to put him out of the game. He's entirely too young. Oh, no, we can't put Candy out the game. Gotta have a third to play. Size by the last count, he owes me close to three million dollars. Oh, I am sick unto death. Oh, I wish they'd taken me with them to Winter Hill this afternoon. I wish tomorrow is Sunday instead of Saturday. Sunday will come. I doubt it. I wish I was going somewhere for good. I wish I had a hundred dollars and could just light out and never see this town again. Seems to me like you wishing for a lot of things. I wish I was somebody else except me. Frankie, you serious when you gave me the doll a while ago? It gives me a pain just to think about them. It's a known truth. Gray-eyed people is jealous. Children, Frankie. I don't want to. Let's go. You got ears. You heard me. I think maybe I better go home. You just can't eat dinner and then go off in the afternoon like that. I know it. You can go home, Candy Lamb, if you want to. But let's go out, Frankie. They sound like they're having a lot of fun. No, they're not. They're just a crowd of ugly, silly children, running and hollering, running and hollering. Nothing to it. <laughs> Look, those big girls! Hey there! I'm mighty glad to see you. Come on in. We can't. We were just passing through to notify our new member. Am I the new member? No, you're not the one the club elected. Not elected? Every ballot was unanimous for Mary Littlejohn. Mary Littlejohn? You mean a girl who just moved in next door? Pasty fat girl with those tacky pigtails? One who plays the piano all day long? Yes. Mary's training for a concert career. You don't have enough sense to appreciate a talented girl like Mary. What are you doing in my yard? 
You're never going to set foot on my papa's property again. You, you crooks! I can shoot you in my papa's pistol! Crooks! Why didn't you elect me? Why can't I be a member? I wouldn't pay them club girls no mind all my life. I've been wanting things I ain't been getting. Besides, them club girls are fully two years older than you. I think they've been spreading it all over town that I smell bad. When I had those boils, I had to use that black bit of smelling ointment. I know. I don't Helen Fletch asked me, who is that funny smell I had? I could shoot every one of them with a pistol. I don't think you smell so bad. You smell sweet. Like a hundred flowers. But I use more perfume than anybody else in town. Crooks. And there was something else, too. They were telling big lies about grown-up people. I don't know what kind of fool they take me for. Keep telling you they're too old for you. Frankie, the whole idea of a club is that there are members who are included and the non-members who are not included. Then what you ought to do is round you up a club of your own. That way you'd be the president yourself. Oh, what would I get? All oh, the little boys and girls you hear playing around here in the neighborhood. I don't want to be the president of all those little young leftover people. Well, go on and enjoy your misery. I bet Janice and Jarvis are members of a lot of clubs. In fact, the army is kind of like a club. You got two nickels on a dime. Now, don't be rooting through my pocketbook like that, Candy. It ain't nice rooting through folks' pocketbook. They might get the idea you're trying to steal their money. I'm looking for your old blue glass eye. Here it is. That's my new eye. Give it here. I still owe $64.23 on this eye. The old blue eye looked very cute. Maybe the finance company will come and take it back. <laughs> oh, they'll never repossess it while I'm wearing it, and I'm still the same size. You got three eyes. Which one of them do you see out of the best? Left eye, precious. The glass eyes don't do me no seeing good at all. Janice and Jarvis. It gives me this pain just to think about them. It's a known truth. Gray-eyed people is jealous. I told you I wasn't jealous. I couldn't be jealous of one of them, unless I was jealous of them both. Associate the two of them together. Well, I was jealous when my foster brother, Honey, married Chlorina. I sent her warning, I tear the ears clean off her head. But you see, I didn't. She got ears just like everybody else. J.A. Janice and Jarvis. Isn't that the strangest thing? What? J.A. Both their names begin with J.A. Well, what about it? If only my name was uh, Jane or Jasmine. I don't follow your frame of mind. Jarvis and Janice and Jasmine, see? No, I don't see. I wonder if it's against the law to change your name or add to it. Naturally, it's against the law. <laughs> well, I don't care. F. Jasmine Adams. You serious when you give me this? I will name her Belle. I don't know what went on in Jarvis's mind when he brought me that doll. Imagine bringing me a doll. Your face when you unwrapped that package sure was a study. <laughs> John Henry, quit picking at the doll's eyes. It makes me so nervous. You hear me? In fact, take that doll somewhere out of my sight. The big mistake I made was to get this close crew cut. For the wedding, I ought to have long brunette hair, don't you think so? We'll see how come long brunette hair is necessary. But I warned you about getting your head shaved off like that before you did it. But nothing would do but you shave it off like that. I'm so worried about being so tall. I'm 12 and 5, 6 years old. Already I'm 5 feet 5 and 3 quarters inches tall. If I keep on growing like this until I'm 21, I figure I'll be nearly 10 feet tall. How tall, Frankie? I doubt if they ever get married or go to a wedding. Those freaks. Freaks? What freaks are you talking about? The fair. The ones we saw there last October. Oh, the freaks at the fair. Oh, she was the cutest little girl I ever saw. 
I never saw anything so cute in my whole life. Did you, Frankie? No, I don't think she was cute. Well, who is that he's talking about? The little old pinhead at the fair. Had no bigger than an orange. The hair all shaved off and a big pink bow at the top. Bow is bigger than the head. Well, that little head of girl was cute. The fact is, all those freak folks fairly give me the creeps. Do I give you the creeps? You? Do you think I will grow into a freak? You? Certainly not. I trust heaven. Well, do you think I will be pretty? Maybe, if you fire down them horns and inch it to. Seriously. Seriously. I think when you fill out, you'll do very well if you behave. But by Sunday, I want to do something to improve myself before the wedding. Then get clean for a change. Scrub them elbows. Fix yourself up nice. You'll do very well. You'll be all right if you file down them horns. I don't know what to do. I just wish I would die. Oh, die, then. Die. Go home. Go home. You heard me? Go home. No, Sick and tired of you, you little minute. midget. Will you Go home. Me? Did you hear what I said? What makes you act like that? You're too mean to live. I know it. Something about John Henry just gets on my nerves these days. I've got a splinter in my foot. That knife ain't no proper thing for a splinter. Seems to me that before this summer, I always used to have such a good time. Remember this spring, how every Friday night Evelyn Owen would come over and spend the night with me? Or I'd go over to her house? And then Evelyn had to go and move away to Florida. Now she won't even write to me. Don't that hurt you none? Hurt anybody else except me. Remember that show Evelyn and me put on? Look ahead, look astern, look the weather in the lee. Blow, blow high, blow, blow low, low, and so sailed we. You got to meet another nice girl like Evelyn Owen. Frankie, what you need is a needle. I don't care anything about my old feet. How old were you, Bernice, when you married your first husband? Thirteen years old and ain't grown an inch since. Can marriage really stop your growth? Marriage don't stop nothing. You never loved any of your four husbands but Ludy. Ludy Maxwell Freeman was the only husband I loved. The rest were just scraps. Did you marry with a veil every time? Three times with a veil. If only I just knew where he was going. Now, quit worrying about that old oh. alley cat. He's gone off to hunt a friend. To hunt a friend? Certainly. He roamed out to find himself a lady friend. But why don't he bring his friend home with him? He ought to know I would be only too glad to have a whole family of cats. But you don't seem the last of that old alley cat. I ought to notify the police force. They will find Charles. I wouldn't do that. I want the police force, please. Police force, I'm notifying you about my cat. Cat! He's lost. He's almost pure Persian. As Persian as I is. But with short hair, a lovely color of gray, with a little white spot at his throat, and he answers to the name of Charles. But if he don't answer to that, he might come if you call Charlena. What? My name is Miss F. Jasmine Adams. That gets it, that gets it. And the address is 124 Grove Street. <laughs> yeah? They're coming in here and tie you up and drag you off to Hootonville. Just picture them fat blue ponies chasing tomcats up and down alleys. I'll come here, Charles. Come here, Charlie. Merciful heavens. <laughs> oh, shut up. What's wrong with you? You got no sense of humor no more. Maybe I'd be better off in jail. Sit down, Frankie. You make me nervous. I bet Janice and Jarvis are almost to Winter Hill by now. 
Did you hear what Jarvis said? No, what? <laughs> they were talking about whether to vote for C.P. MacDonald, and Jarvis said, why well, wouldn't vote for that scoundrel if he were running to be dog catcher? <laughs> well, I never heard anything so witty in my life. And you know what Janice remarked when Jarvis mentioned about how much I'd grown? She said she didn't think I looked so terribly big. She said she got the major portion of her growth before she was 13. She said I was the right height and had acting talent and ought to go to Hollywood. She did, Bernice. OK, all right, she did. She said I was a lovely size and I probably wouldn't grow any taller. She said, anyway, all fashion models and movie stars. She did not. She did not. I heard her from the window. She only remarked you had probably reached your growth. But she didn't go on and on like that or mention anything about Hollywood. She, she said, said to, to me... You, that's a serious fall, Frankie. Somebody just chanced to make a loose remark. You're cozening in that mind of yours till nobody'd recognize it. Like the time your Aunt Pet mentioned, you had sweet manners. The next thing I know, you was going all around bragging how you had the finest manners in town. You ought to go to Hollywood. That's a serious fault. Oh, quit preaching at me. I'm not preaching at you. It's a solemn truth, and you know it. Well, I admit it. Well? A little. What I need to know is this. Do you think I made a good impression? Impression? Yes. Well, how would I know? Well, I mean, how did I act? What did I do? You didn't do nothing to speak of. Nothing? No, you just stood there, watched a pair of them like they were ghosts. And when they start talking about that wedding, them ears of yours stiffened out the size of cabbage leaves. They didn't! They did! Someday you're gonna find that big fat tongue of yours pulled up by the roots and laying there before you on the table! Oh, quit talking so rude. I'm so scared I didn't make a good impression. Oh, come, sugar. <laughs> Bernice didn't mean it that way. They were so pretty. They must have such a good time and they went away and left me. Frankie, I want you to sit up and behave yourself. They came and went away. Left me with this feeling. <laughs> oh, see, I bet I know something. Frankie's got a crush. Frankie's got a crush. Frankie's got a crush on the way. Frankie's got a crush. Frankie's got a crush. You better quit! Put that knife down. Make me. Put it down, devil. Well, throw it. I'm the best knife thrower in this town. If they would have a contest, I would win. Francis Adams, you're going to try that stunt once too often. I want you to quit picking with me. You just ain't fit to live in a house. I don't be living in this one much longer. I'm going to run away from home. Good riddance to a big old bag of rubbish. You wait and see. I'm leaving town. Where do you think you're going? I don't know. You're going crazy. That's where you're going. No. This coming Sunday, after the wedding, I'm leaving town. And I swear by my two eyes, I'm never coming back here anymore. Sugar, you're serious. Of course. Do you think I would stand here and swear that swear and tell a story? Sometimes, Bernice, I think it takes you longer to realize a fact than it does anybody who ever lived. But you say you don't know where you're going. You're going, but you don't know where. And that don't make sense to me. Oh, I feel just exactly like somebody's peeled all the skin off me. Oh, I wish I had some good cold peach ice cream. But every word I told you is a solemn truth. I'm leaving here after the wedding. Oh, hello, T.T. and honey. I didn't hear you coming. Hello. What's the matter? No, oh, your foster brother, honey, got into a ruckus again. Stand on the sidewalk in front of Sam's Cafe and the police cracked him on the head. What? Why, it's a wealth the size of a small egg. Times like this, I feel like I got to bust loose or die. What was you doing? Nothing. I'm just passing down the street, minding my own business when this drunk soldier came out of Sam's and bumped into me. I looked at him, he gave me a push. I pushed him back and he started a ruckus. Then this MP came up and slammed me with a stick. Oh, it's just one of those accidents. Could happen to anybody. Toots him on your horn, honey. Now, don't bother my horn, Butch. Doody-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo. <laughs>
told you not to touch my horn. Look at it. You got it full of slobber inside and out. It's ruined. Don't touch that little boy. I'll stomp your brains out. Now, John Henry knows when he needs a good shake. <laughs> don't you, Butch. Now, you run on home, Candy. It's way past your supper time. John Henry, which hand is the money in? You can keep it if you guess right. I won. Much obliged. That sure is a cute suit you got on, honey. Yesterday I heard somebody speak about you as Lightfoot Brown. I think that's a grand nickname. <laughs> it's on account of your going to Harlem and all the different places where you've run away. Lightfoot. I wish somebody would call me Lightfoot Adams. <laughs> Suit me better if Honey Camden had brick feet. Keeps me anxious and keeps me worried. Come on, let's go. Now, Frankie, I want you to forget all that foolishness we was discussing here. And if your pop ain't home by good dark, go over to you and pet some play with John Henry. Since when have I been scared of the dark? You'll find your supper on top of the stove and pie in the icebox. Good night, sugar. and spend the night with me. I can't. Why? Just because. Because why? We could have a good time. Frankie, I don't want to. Oh, you fool jackass, suit yourself. I only asked you because you look so ugly and so lonesome. Why, I'm not a bit lonesome. Well, I don't want to go into that empty, ugly house all by myself. I'm mad at you. Something's wrong. It's too quiet. I have a peculiar supernatural warning in my bones. I bet you a hundred dollars it's gonna storm. I don't want to spend the night with you. Terrible, terrible dog day storm. Maybe even a cyclone or a tornado or a tidal wave. Frankie, if you're afraid, I'll get my weekend bag and come over. Suit yourself. Then I'll stay here. You don't need a weekend bag. You're not going up to Savannah. Just here. Go tell your mama. She's at the show. She'll know where you are. Come on. down to sleep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless Bernice, Mama, Uncle Royal, Honey, T.T., the Americans, and Frankie.
Frankie, when Bernice said... Shh. That sounds like honey. He stopped the bang and spit out of his horn. Please, honey, go on, finish. I bet a policeman stopped him. To me, it is the irony of fate the way they come here. Those moths could fly anywhere. Yet they keep hanging around the windows of this house. I told Bernice I was leaving town for good. But she did not believe me. Sometimes I honestly think she's the biggest fool that ever drew breath. I try to impress something on a big fool like that, and it's just like talking to a block of cement. I kept on telling and telling and telling her. I told her I had to leave this town for good, because it is inevitable. Inevitable. What's inevitable? Don't bother me, John Henry. I'm thinking. What you thinking about? About the wedding. About my brother and the bride. Everything's been so sudden today. I never believed before about the fact that the Earth turns at about the rate of a thousand miles a day. But now it seems to me I feel the world going around very fast. I feel it turning and it makes me dizzy. Turn the other way. I'm going with them. What? I tell you, I'm going with them. It's like I've known it all my life. Tomorrow I will tell everybody. Huh? After the wedding, I'm going with them to Winter Hill. You serious? The trouble with me is that for a long time, I have been just an I person. All people belong to a we except me. When Bernice says we, she means her church and lodge and colored people. Soldiers can say we and mean the army. Until this afternoon, I didn't have a we. But now after seeing Janice and Jarvis, I suddenly realize that the bride and my brother are the we of me. So I'm going with them. I'm going with them and joining with the wedding. This coming Sunday, when my brother and the bride leave town, I'm going with them to Winter Hill, and after that, to whatever place that they will ever go. so much when we belong to be together. I love the two of them so much because they are the we of me. if you ain't careful. I'm leaving town tomorrow. After the wedding, I'm going with my brother Jarvis and Janice to Winter Hill. And after that, for the rest of our lives, over the whole wide world. That's a solemn fact. I'll probably never see this old street again for the rest of my whole life. Goodbye. Take care. morning. Papa, there's something I have to tell you. After the wedding, I'm going away. Mm-hmm. Papa? How many times do I have to tell you not to touch things? If you break that, it will cost me five dollars. Papa, please listen to me. All right, I'm listening. What is it? I'm trying to tell you that after the wedding, Frankie, I'm... Frankie, you take that lipstick off. Now, what was it you wanted? I have to buy a wedding dress. All right, you charge it at O'Rourke's. And wedding shoes and a pair of sheer stockings. You get what you need. I'll call up and tell them it's all right. Now you get something nice. I'll write to you, Papa. I'll write you every day.
Pretty good, huh? Yes. You want that stuff again? Of course not. Stop lying, Satan. That much wind ain't natural. That's gin blowing. What's gin, Berenice? Now, you go inside, Candy. And if you get caught high like that, you're going to be in trouble for sure. The parole man says so. And remember, I've warned you. Honey, I need some help down at my store. My porter's failed me again. I wonder if you could help me. I ain't got the time. He's got a job. He plays nights at Sam's Cafe, Mr. Adams. I keep Frankie home. I won't be back for supper, and I don't want her running wild in the streets. All right, Mr. Adams. Liar. And you got me lying, too. You and Sam's all night playing, but you're playing for nothing, and when you ain't playing, you're drumming up liquor parties. But I feel good when I play. Bernice, I gotta have a dollar. You're barking up the wrong tree, boy. One of these days, I'm gonna get me a good job. Save my money, get out of this town. You're just mean enough to do that. Can't get a job to earn your rent money, but you can to go away and leave me alone to worry. Bernice, I gotta have a dollar. Here, at least it'll stop you from stealing. Well, guess I'll be dancing off now. Go away, boy, you ain't fooling nobody. Don't worry. One buck ain't gonna get me no ticket to Chicago. Frankie, I'll thank you to do one thing or the other. Eat or comb. I'm about to show you something. What? Frankie, what? You'll see. I don't come in here, mind. And don't peek. Uh -uh. Now close your eyes and don't open them until I tell you. These are the wedding clothes. Oh, how pretty! Oh, what's the matter, Bernice? Don't you like it? No, it don't do. What do you mean, it don't do? Exactly that, it just don't do. But I don't see what you mean. What is wrong? Well, if you can't see what is wrong, I can't explain it to you. Look at your head to begin with. Done had all your hair shaved off like a convict. You tie this ribbon round this head with no hair. It looks peculiar. But I'm going to wash and try to stretch my hair tonight. Stretch your hair? How you going to stretch your hair? And look at them elbows. Done bought a grown woman's evening dress. All that brown crust on your elbows. The two things don't mix. Take it back. Take it back to the store. But I can't take it back. It's bargain basement. Well, let me see what I can do with it. I think you're just not accustomed to seeing anybody dressed up. Oh. I ain't accustomed to seeing human Christmas trees in August. Frankie's dress looks like a Christmas tree. Two faced Judas. You just now said it was pretty. Old double faced Judas. Step, step back a little. Now, don't you honestly think it's pretty? Give me your candy opinion. Frankie, I never knew anybody so unreasonable. You ask me my candy opinion, I give you my candy opinion. You ask me again, I give it again. But what you want is not my honest opinion, but my good opinion on something I know is wrong. You think they think it looked funny? Yes, sugar, I honestly do. I only want to look pretty for Janice and Jarvis. Oh, Frankie, you still got your mind set on going with them? When you know in your soul, this mean of yours is pure foolish. I don't wish to have to remind you anymore. Please call me F. Jan. Oh. Furthermore, 
I want to emphasize that everything good of mine has got to be washed and ironed so I can pack them in the suitcase. Everybody in town believes that I'm leaving. All except Papa. He's stubborn as an old mule. No use arguing with people like that. Me and Mr. Adams has got some sense. I told Papa this morning I was going, but he wouldn't listen to me. Never listens to what I say. Sometimes I wonder if Papa loves me or not. Of course he loves you. He's just a busy widow man set in his ways. I wonder if I can find some tissue paper to line this suitcase. Look at me. Take that all. You gave it to me. You Take it off. You just put it on to make a show of me. <laughs> Truly, Frankie, what makes you think they want you tagging along with them? Two is company, three is a crowd. That's the main thing about a You wait and see. Remember back to the time of the flood? Remember Noah and the ark? And what has that got to do with it? Remember the way he admitted them creatures? You shut up, you big old mouth. Two by two, he admitted them creatures. Two by two. It's all right, but you wait and see. They will take me. And if they don't? And if they don't, I will kill myself. Kill yourself how? I will shoot myself in the side of the head with a pistol that Papa keeps under his handkerchief with Mother's picture in the bureau drawer. You know what Mr. Adams said about you playing around with that pistol? Oh, I've heard of a many a peculiar thing in my day, but this idea of yours is the most peculiar. I've known men to fall in love with girls so ugly you'd wonder if their eyes are straight. Even known boys to fall in love with women older than their mothers. Take Honey. He's in love with that horn. I've known people to fall in love with this cell. Dear Lord, we thank thee for what we're about to receive to nourish our body. Amen. And what was we talking about in the first place? About peculiar things. Yes, as I was just now saying, I've seen and heard a many peculiar thing in my day. But one thing I ain't never seen or heard tell of, no, sir. Never in all my born days have I ever heard of anybody falling in love with a wedding. And after thinking it over, I've come to a conclusion. What you ought to be thinking about, young lady, is a bow. Nice little bow. I don't want any bow. What would I do with one? Do you mean something like a soldier who would maybe take me to the blue moon? Who said anything about soldiers? I'm talking about a nice little white boy bow your own age. How about that little old Barney next door? Barney McKean, that nasty Barney. Certainly you could make out with him to someone better comes along, you do. You are the biggest crazy in this town. <laughs> crazy, called the same to crazy. Him and that girl down the block, they go to the alley behind that pet's garage. I think maybe they smoke or something. They don't let anybody watch them. I watched them once. What do they do? They don't smoke. Piano doodling man. Oh, I seriously believe this will be the last straw. Me too. If it isn't Mary Little John practicing, it's this. Oh. They tell me that when they want to punish the crazy people in Hootonville, they tie them up and make them listen to piano tuning. We could turn on the radio, drown them out. I don't want the radio on. But I advise you to keep the radio on after I leave. You may very likely hear us speak over the radio. Speak about what, pray tell? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know what about exactly, but probably some eyewitness account about something we'll be asked to speak. <laughs> don't follow you. What have we got eyewitness who could ask us to speak? <laughs> what, Frankie? Who's speaking on the radio? When I said we, you thought I meant you and me and John Henry West to speak over the world radio? <laughs> I've never heard of anything so funny since I was born. Who? Oh, why? <laughs> the club of girls. What do you crooks mean crossing my yard? How many times do I have to tell you not to set foot in my papa's property? Get out of here! You just ignore them. Make out like you don't see them pass. 
I hope they die. Oh, Frankie, you mustn't say things like that. We all die soon enough. You gonna die, Bernice? Certainly, precious. Everybody's got to die. Everybody? You gonna die, Frankie? I doubt it. I honestly don't think I'll ever die. What is die? It must be terrible to be dead. Nothing but black, black, black. Yes, baby. How many dead people do you know? I know six dead people and all, not counting my mother. Ludie Maxwell Freeman is dead. If I didn't count Ludie, it wouldn't be fair, because he died just before I was born. Bernice, do you think very frequently about Ludie? You know I do. I think of the five wonderful years we had together, all the bad times I've seen since. Sometimes I almost wish I'd never knew Ludie at all. Makes you too lonesome afterwards. You go home from work at night, a terrible lonesome quench comes over you. Take up with too many sorry men to try and get over that feeling. But T.T. is not sorry. Oh, I wasn't referring to T.T. He is a fine, upstanding colored gentleman that's walked in the state of grace all his life. When are you going to marry with him? I'm not going to marry with him. But you were just now saying. I was just now saying how sincerely I respect T.T. and how sincerely I regard T.T. But he don't make me shiver none. Listen, Bernice. There's something queer I have to tell you. It's something that happened to me when I was riding around town today. Now, I don't exactly know how to explain what I mean. Then what is it? Well, I was riding along, and I passed two stores with an alley in between. And the sun was frying hot. And just as I passed this alley, I caught a glimpse of something out of the corner of my left eye. A dark, double shape. And this glimpse brought to my mind, so sudden and clear, my brother and the bride, that I just stopped and, and couldn't hardly bear to look and see what it was. And then I turned slowly and look. And you know what was there? It was just two boys, that was all. But it gave me such a queer feeling. That is the most remarkable thing I ever heard of. What I mean is... I know. I know what you mean. You mean right here in the corner of your eye, you suddenly catch something. A shiver runs through you. You whirl around, stand there facing you don't know what. But not Ludy, Not who you want. And for a minute, you feel like you've been dropped down a well. Yes, that's it. It's mighty remarkable. It's a thing been happening to me all my life. Yet just now, it's the first time I ever heard it put into words. Yes, that's the way it is when you're in love. Yeah. I always maintained I never believed in love. I never believed in love. I have something to tell you, and it's to be a warning. You hear me, Frankie? You hear me, John Henry? Yes, I hear you, Bernice. I'm here to tell you I was happy. No human woman in all the world was happier than I was in them days. And that includes everybody. The five years you were married to Ludie. Hmm. From that autumn morning, when I first met him on the road in front of Campbell's filling station, up until the very night he died. November, the year 1940. The very year and the very month I was born. It was Thursday. Thursday long towards six o'clock, around this time of day, only November. I remember I went to the passage and opened the front door. Dark was coming on. An old hound was howling far away. And I go back in the room, lay down on Ludie's bed. And I lay myself over Ludie, with my arms spread out, and my face on his face. And I prayed and asked the Lord to contage my strength, my strength, to him. 
I even asked the Lord to let it be anybody. But please don't let it be duty. I laid there. I prayed. Oh, how I've prayed. Prayed for a long time until night. Yet that night he died. I tell you, he died. Ludy, Ludy Freeman. Ludy Maxwell Freeman died. Seems to me I feel sadder about Ludy than any other dead person. Although I never knew him. I know I ought to cry sometimes about my mother, but it looks like I can. Ludy. Maybe it was because I was born so soon after Ludy died. But you were starting out to tell some kind of a warning. Don't you see what I was doing? I loved Ludy. He was the first man I ever loved. Therefore, I had to go and copy myself forever after. And what I did was to marry off just little pieces of Ludy wherever I run across them. And it was my misfortune. They all turned out to be the wrong pieces. But my intentions was to repeat me and Ludy. Now, don't you see? I see what you're driving at, but I don't see how it is a warning applied to me. You know, and I'll tell you, you end that wedding tomorrow. That's what I'm warning you about. I see what you have in mind. Don't think I don't. You think you're going to march up to the preacher right in between your brother and the bride. You think you're going to break into that wedding. And heaven only knows what else. No. I don't see myself walking to the preacher with them. I see through them eyes. Don't argue with me. And what I'm warning you is this. If you fall in love with some unheard of thing like this, what is ever going to happen to you? Will you be trying to break into weddings the rest of your days? It makes me sick to listen to people who don't have any sense. You just like to talk about Looney, that's all. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> You're setting yourself this fancy trap to catch yourself in trouble, and you know it. It will take me, you wait and see. <laughs> oh, I'm only trying to reason seriously, but I see it's no use. You're just jealous. You're just trying to deprive me of all the pleasure of leaving town. <laughs> say anything about Willis Rhodes. Why'd you marry him? He have a mashed thumb or a coat or something? <laughs> now that, that really was something. <laughs> I only know he stole your furniture. He was so terrible, you had to call the law on him. Oh, that ain't all. He was always running off somewhere. So imagine a cold, bitter January night, if you can. Me laying by myself in a big old parlor bed, alone in the house, because everybody gone off for the Saturday night. Me, mind you, hates to sleep in a big old empty bed by myself at any time. Well, come past 12 o'clock on this cold, bitter January night. Can you remember winter time, John Henry? Well, imagine. Suddenly there come a sloughing sound. And a tap, tap, tap on the window. And Miss me. <laughs> I, so what? What happened? The way you look, the way you look at yonder. Just look at my two pictures and them four big ears. <laughs> what happened? 
Come on, sugar. Let's roll out the dough for the wedding cookies. If it's anything I mortally despise, it's a person who starts out to tell something and works up people's interest and then stops. I admit it. I'm sorry, but it was one of them things I suddenly realized I, I, I couldn't tell you and John Edry. You could have sent him out of the room and told me. Oh, no. Precious Bernie's couldn't do that either. I don't think I care a particle about what happened. I just wish Willis Rhodes had come in about that time and slit your throat. I wish you'd stop talking so rude. Now, here, Candy. Here's a scrap of dough for you to make your cookie batter. Cookies, cookies, cookies. <laughs> I intend to take two baths tonight. One long soaking bath and scrub with a brush. I'm gonna try and scrape this crust off my elbows, then let out the dirty water, take a second bath. Great! Good idea. Be glad to see you clean for a change. I will take two baths. Why is it against the law to change your name? What's that on your neck? Thought that was the head you carried on that neck. Just think. Oh. Suppose I ups and calls myself Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. John Henry here tries to palm himself off as Henry Ford. Don't talk childish. That's not the kind of changing I mean. I mean from a name that doesn't suit you to a name you prefer. Like I changed from Frankie to F. Jasmine. But it would still be confusion. Suppose we all decided to change two entirely different names. Nobody'd know who anybody was talking about. The whole world would go crazy. I don't see what that has to do with it. Because things accumulate around a name. You have a name, one thing after another happens to you. Things have accumulated around your name. But what has accumulated around my old name? Nothing, see? My name just didn't mean anything. Until yesterday, nothing ever happened to me. But it will. Things will happen. Oh, what? Hawk, take off my shoes, my hat, my pocketbook, and I thank you very much. Listen, Bernice, doesn't it strike you as strange that I am I? And you are you? Like when you when you walk down the street and you meet somebody. And you are you, and he is him. Yet when you look at each other, the eyes make a connection. Then you go off one way and he goes off another way. And maybe you never see each other again, not in your whole life. Do you see what I mean? Not exactly. That's not what I meant to say anyway. I'm talking about this town. There are all these people here in town that I don't even know by sight or name. And now I'm leaving town, and there are all these people I will never know. Well, who is it you want to know? Everybody. Everybody in the world. Well, just listen to that. It would take you over 200,000 years to know everybody. <laughs> That's not what I mean. That's not what I'm talking about. Then what <laughs> do you mean, and what are you talking about? Let's me out, Frankie. No, you go. This is what I mean. What on earth's wrong with you? Man or boy? Boy or man? When we leave Winter Hill, we are going to more places than you ever thought about. Or even you existed. Just where we'll go first, I don't know. And it don't matter. Because after we go to that place, we're going on to another. Alaska, China, Iceland, South America. Traveling on trains. Running rip on motorcycles. Flying all over the world in airplanes. Here today and gone tomorrow. All over the world. It's the whole trip. Boy or man? And talking to things happening. Things are happening so fast we don't hardly have time to realize them. Captain Jarvis Adams wins highest medals and is decorated by the president. Miss F. Jasmine Adams breaks all records. Mrs. Janice Adams elected Miss United Nations in beauty contest. One thing after another happening so fast we don't hardly realize them. Oh, and so many of them. Everybody. We will just walk up to people and know them right away. We'll be walking down a dark road and see a lighted house and knock on the door. And strangers will rush to meet us and say, come in, come in. We will know decorated aviators and New York people and movie stars. And we will have thousands and thousands of friends. We will belong to so many clubs that we can't even keep track of them all. We will be members of the whole world. Firemen! Man of boy! Child, child. Oh, that's right. <laughs>
come to Bernice. Bernice knows. Bernice understands. <laughs> and now, <laughs> Bernice wants it to sit on her lap so she can quiet it down. You know, you're trying to grow too fast, Frankie. <laughs> Leave Frankie alone. She ain't bothering you. I'm sick. Oh, no, you're not. And don't you grudge your cousin a little bit of love. Oh, mean, bossy Frankie. What is she doing so mean right now? Just laying here, <gasps> all wore out, trying to get the rest. <laughs> if I have to be me for the rest of my life, I think I will go crazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna feel like I just can't breathe anymore. I feel like I just wish I could tear down the whole town. <laughs> so I've heard you mention, but that won't help none. We go around trying <laughs> first one thing, then another, yet we're still caught, just the same. That's the way I see it in my mind's eye. Bernice, which eye's your mind's eye? Don't yank my head back like that, Candy. Me and Frankie ain't gonna float through the ceiling and leave you. I wonder if you've ever thought about this. Here we are. Right now, this very minute now. While we're talking right now, this minute is passing. And it will never come again. Never in the whole world. When it's gone, it's gone. No power on earth could bring it back again. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely away from heaven and home? For Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he, for his eye is on a sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know that he watches me. So I sing because I'm happy. got the sharpest set of human bones I ever felt. Dearly beloved, 
We are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Do you, Jarvis, take Janice to be your wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part? I do. And do you, Janice, take Jarvis to be your wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part? I do. The ring. Repeat after me, Jarvis. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. Give me go. Go, Frankie, Frankie. to the bride and groom. Frankie, I'm going with you. With us? Frankie, you can't. I love you. We have to be together. Wherever you go, I'm going too. Frankie, this is our honeymoon. Uh, what is it? Frankie, get out no, of no. there. Dennis and Jarvis are taking me with them. This is the absolute limit. Frankie, get out of there or I'll pull you out. No, don't touch me. Dad, let me talk to her, please. Frankie, your brother and I are married now and... We only have three days together before he has to go back to camp. You don't want to spoil it for us, do you? Well, I know you love us and that we love you. We, we, when you say we, you only mean you and Jarvis and I'm not included. Frankie, you're spoiling our wedding. No, I'm not, I'm not. Take me, take me! All right, you'll have to be shown then. This is it. Bring him, get out of here! Dad, I've had enough of this nonsense! Dad, <laughs> John Henry, you leave Frankie alone. <laughs> oh, my heart feels so cheap. <laughs> what makes you want to leave your old papa like this? I love them so. <laughs> Frankie, don't cry. Now, please be reasonable, Frankie. <laughs> I just wish the whole world would die. <laughs> Listen, tell me what you'd like, and I'll try to do it if it's in my power. All I wish in the world is for no human being to speak to me again as long as I live. Well, ball then, misery. Well, it looks like the show is over and the monkey's dead. You think it's over, but it's not. No, 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 no. You want to come down and help me in the store tomorrow? Polish some silver with a chamois rag? You can even play with those old watch springs. If you think it's all over, that only shows how little you know.
They all complimented the wine punch. You got a touch with liquor, T.T. I do for a fact. Well, I reckon it's because I keep the liquor on the outside. I mean, instead of on the end most of the time. <laughs> Who's that? Bernice. What are you doing out there? Douse the light. What are you doing out there? What are you afraid of? Turn off the light. Are you drunk? I'm scared out of being drunk. In trouble? The law is after me. Honey, what have you done now? Well, I borrowed this car. John Henry, what are you doing here like that? You want to catch your death? I feel funny, Bernice. No, you don't. Now go home to bed before your mama comes back and finds you here. I'm sick, Bernice. No, you're not. You just want attention. Now run on home, Candy. I don't have the patience to fool with you tonight. What happened? Well, I, I borrowed this car. Car hit a man hard. Like to kill him. And you run away? You fool. Honey Brown, you fool. What's the white man? I think so. Bernice, you gotta help me. They put me on the road again for this for sure. If I'm lucky, they put me on the road. Don't talk like that, T.T. I have to ask you to do this for me. Here's all the money you I got. You want me to take him out of town in my car? Please. Bernice. Honey, honey, you will be careful. You'll be careful, both of you. Lord. You took Ludie. Won't you please watch over Honey Camden? He's all the family I've got left.
Hey there. I saw you through the window. Hello. Where are you going? I don't know. Savannah, I guess. I have to go back to camp tomorrow. Boy, I'll sure be glad to get out of this old town. Three days I've been here, three days, and nobody's even said hello to me. All they want to say is how much something costs. What's the matter? Well, what's the matter? I think they're after me. My father might have sent them. You see, I've decided to leave home. There's a back room. We can go in there. Come on. Bring the beer. Thank you. Well, don't be scared. Let's go outside. They probably went away. It's nicer in here. any noise. I'll come up. You stay there. The doctor doesn't know what ails John Henry yet. It might be catching. But he'd like to see me. He's too sick, Frankie. Now you go to bed. How bad is he sick, Bernice? He's... He's...
feeling watching them take our things out. Occasionally when it gets so quiet like this, I have a strange feeling. It's like John Henry is hovering in this kitchen, solemn looking, ghost gray. I don't see why he had to suffer so, that poor little soul. I never believed John Henry would die. It's funny. I felt so sad and I missed him so much. But lately, I can hardly even picture him. He's like a little white ghost going further and further away. To think I said, run along, Candy. I don't have the patience to fool with you. Oh, it's just judgment on me. I'm forgetting about him. Sometimes I never think of him once all day long. That's natural. You're growing up. I'll thank you not to be banging that old sewing machine around like that. I've had 22 years' service out of it, and there's still plenty of use in it yet. OK, OK. Bernice, I wish you didn't have to give quick notice, just because we're all moving together. But your papa won't be needing me with your aunt pet keeping house. What's that? Rachmaninoff. I'm just mad about Rachmaninoff. Mary is just beginning this concerto. She may play it for her debut when she's 18 years old. Mary playing the piano, and a whole orchestra playing it, one in the same time, mind you. Awfully hard. Mary? Little John? I don't know why you always have to speak her name in a tinged voice like that. Have I ever said anything again her? All I said was she's too lumpy, marshmallow white, and she makes me nervous to see her sitting there sucking on them pigtails. Braids. Furthermore, there's no use our discussing a certain party. You could never possibly understand. It's just not in you. Be that as it may, let us not fuss or quarrel our last afternoon. I don't want to fuss either. Besides, it's not our last afternoon. I'll come and see you often. <laughs> uh oh. No, you won't, baby. You'll have other things to do. Your road is already strange to me now. You still have the fox fur that Ludie gave you. Somehow this little fur looks so sad, so thin, with a sad little fox wise face. Got every reason to look sad with what's happened these past few months. And I just don't know, I don't know what I've done to deserve it. The way Honey looked when the judge said 10 years John Henry, my little boy, gone. It's peculiar the way it all happened so fast. First Honey caught, and then later in that same week, John Henry died. And then I got to know Mary. It was the irony of fate would have it. We first got to know each other in front of the lipsticks and cosmetics counter at Woolworths. And it was the week of the fair. Frankie. Hey, Frankie. Yes, Barney? Is Mary there? No! It's Barney McKean. I'm meeting her at our new house at five. Come on in, Barney, won't you? OK. Barney puts me in mind of a Greek god. Barney puts you in mind of what? Of a Greek god. Mary remarked that Barney reminded her of a Greek god. It looks like I can't understand a thing you say no more. You know those old-timey Greeks worship those Greek gods. But what has that got to do with Barney McKeon? On account of the figure. Hi, Greek god Barney. This afternoon, I seen your initials chalked down on the sidewalk, ML loves BM. If I could find out who did it, I'd rub it out with their faces. Did you do it, Frankie? I wouldn't do a kid thing like that. I even resent you asking me. Resent you asking me. Mary can't stand me anyhow. Yes, she can stand you. I'm her most intimate friend I ought to know. As a matter of fact, she's told me several lovely compliments about you. I'm riding on the moving van to our new house. Would you like to come along? Sure. OK. You can ride back with the furniture, because I'm riding on the front seat with the driver. 
We got a letter from Janice and Jarvis this afternoon. Jarvis is stationed with the occupation forces in Germany, and they took a vacation trip to Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Don't you think that's a lovely name, Bernice? Kind of pretty name. But it reminds me of soapy water. Mary and I will most likely pass through Luxembourg when we are going around the world together. I'll see you soon, Bernice. Sure, baby. Mm-hmm.